Welcome to ECTV's uh, Candidates uh, Debate. Tonight uh, we're going to be talking with uh, Marcel Lisi, a candidate for mayor of Scranton. And we did invite uh, Gary Lewis, his opponent on the Republican ticket, but we're informed he was unavailable. So uh, Marcel was kind enough to uh, continue uh, to come here. And what we're going to do is we're going to ask him some questions that we would ask in a normal debate. Two is going to be our magic number. We're going to give him an opening statement for two minutes, uh, the questions two minutes to answer, and then the closing statement of two minutes as well. So first of all, uh, Marcel, on behalf of ECTV and all of our viewers at home and the studio audience here, we want to thank you for, for coming in this evening to, uh, to address the issues that are facing the next mayor of the city of Scranton. You're welcome and thank you for having me here. I, I, it, it's a pleasure. Okay. Uh, we, if you'd like to start, uh, give us a, an opening statement. Uh, tell us about yourself a little bit for a couple minutes here and the voters can uh, you know, get to know you kind of up close and personal. Okay, awesome. Uh, my name is Marcel Lisi. I was born and raised in the city of Scranton. I'm a current resident. I'm a West Sider by nature, but I'm a resident of Kaiser Valley. Uh, I graduated from West Scranton High School in 2006 and uh, Marywood University in 2010. Uh, I hold a bachelor's degree in history, political science, and pre-law. Uh, I studied in Oxford dur during the summer of 2009 at St. Clair's College, so I have traveled a bit. I've been to every major city between Chicago and London, so you know I kind of have a handle on the situation of what works and what doesn't work in major cities. Um, right now I'm trying to lower taxes in Scranton because it's getting to the point where it's turning into a ghost town. Our population's declining. Businesses and families literally build around the city of Scranton. And so I believe that, well I think that if we lower taxes that we'll start attracting more families, more businesses to the city that will expand our tax base. So as our tax rates go down, our revenue for the city actually goes up and so we'll have more money to fix the roads, to uh, maintain bridges, to hire more employees if we need them. And that's basically it. That's why I'm running for mayor. Okay, well thank you very much. Well let's, let's start with the, the very first question. What do you see uh, as Scranton's biggest problem and probably its largest strength that the, we face today? Its biggest problem is the high taxes. The taxes are just too damn high. And right now, like I said before in my opening statement, businesses and families are fleeing the city. Our tax base is eroding. So every year, in fact, you can't even plan a budget because every year, say you're getting so much money this year, next year, it's going to be a lot less because people are leaving the city. And so we have to change that. The high taxes is what's killing us, and we know that. Most of my family left the city. Most of my friends left the city. I'm ready to leave too myself. But that's what we have to do. We have to lower taxes. We have to expand our tax base. We have to give people an incentive to own homes in the city, to own businesses to be anchors in the community. Now our greatest strength, I, I think, right now it's the will of the people. People, this is why I'm running for mayor, I'm getting so much grassroots support out there, like, it's, it's unbelievable. I go door to door, I stand on porches, I talk to people on the street, on the sidewalk, and they're all saying the same thing, Marcel, we're being taxed out of our own city. Uh, thank you for that answer. Oh, I, I, I think I maybe know the answer to the next question. But, okay. Uh, uh, you kind of uh, maybe you gave it away. I'm not sure. But what would your first priority be when you get into office? Lower taxes, bring more jobs back to the city, and that's it. Okay. I, I, I had a feeling <laughs> that was going to be the answer. Uh, uh, now, when we talked a little bit a while ago about the, the, the biggest problems and the and the and the largest strengths. Uh, we, we all know that it's getting on your theme of taxes. There's all kinds of reasons or blame to go around. Uh, what do you see the role of the municipal unions in Scranton's financial recovery process for the future? I'm not one to play the blame game. I mean, Scranton, it's been on the downhill for decades, and everybody has a role in that, whether it's unions or otherwise. But I think we need to work with the unions. We need union concessions. Uh, the court awards, I think the unions need to step back a little bit. Because if we keep raising taxes and more people keep leaving the city, eventually cops and firemen are going to get laid off because there's not going to be any money to pay them with. I mean, you can stand up here and ask me for $100 all day and I can even sign a contract, but if I don't have it in my wallet, I don't have it in my wallet and you're not going to get it. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing with the unions. If they want money, they're going to have to work with us, otherwise they're going to lose their jobs. Mm -hmm. Well, along those same lines, everyone, nearly everyone, is familiar with Scranton's financial situation. Uh, so what are, what are your qualifications to shepherd the city to a position of liquidity in the future? I'm not afraid. 
I'm, I'm a young Republican, I get that, but this is why I'm running. The city is in such a dire state right now, it calls for somebody like me. And with my background, I serve for two senators and a congressman, uh, Senator Casey, Senator Specter, and Congressman Kanjorski. And I talk to constituents all throughout northeastern Pennsylvania. And so I, I understand what people want, I understand what they need, and especially the people in my hometown of Scranton, they need jobs. Businesses need low taxes to provide good jobs with. Homeowners need low property taxes, otherwise people abandon these bigger homes in the city and they get turned into apartments and that's where the blight comes from. And that's where a lot of cri a crime comes from too. Well, you know, speaking of blight, uh, and you know, every city has their, their share of blight and it seems to be increasing in the last decade or so, I would think, maybe even two now. But it what, increases with the taxes. <laughs> <laughs> well, that could be one of the reasons I as well. But what, what do you think, uh, or what will you do to improve the, the current blighted neighborhoods so they don't continue to negatively impact the market value, especially of real estate in the city of Scranton? You're preaching to the choir, but every neighborhood is becoming blighted because people are losing their homes. We don't have decent jobs around here. People can't maintain a household. People just walk away, especially older people on fixed incomes. Every time the taxes jump up $1,000 a year in the city, you know, some little old lady trying to keep her home, all of a sudden she can't afford to pay some young guy to cut the grass. She can't afford to paint the house. She might not even be able to afford to pay the taxes, and so she loses the house, and it becomes a blighted property. We need to lower taxes. We need to attract families to the city to live in these bigger homes, not turn them into apartments. That's how you solve the blight problem. Well, what do you think the city can do to encourage uh, property owners to improve the appearance of their properties aside from legislation or grants? Well, or you, you know the answer to this already. Give people more of their own money back. Lower the taxes. If people had more money, they'd be able to fix up their homes, fix up their cars, take their family out downtown to an eatery, have a great time, spend money in the city. People need more of their own money, and they need decent jobs around here. Um, well, I don't think anybody's really going to disagree with people having more money, and we know that taxes sometimes are, you know, they, they cut into what we call real income. Exactly. You know, this, uh, discretionary income in particular, if yep. I'm not mistaken. And, uh, you know, speaking of income and some, uh, uh, some economic issues, you know, what strategies would you employ or will you employ to ensure a, we call a strong, synergistic, and successful working relationship between the mayor's office and the city council? Synergistic, that's the first time I heard that word. But in order to foster a better relationship between the mayor and the council, we got to work with we got to work with each other the, may, the mayoral branch the council branch we got to sit down the mayor needs attend needs to attend council meetings he needs to be there he needs to be talking to the people he needs to look them in the face and say i understand what you're talking about i know what the problem is come over here let me write down your information let me go see the problem physically let me be a hands-on manager that's what that's what kind of mayor we need and those are the kind of council people we need too a lot of people go to council and they get yelled at by by certain individuals I'm not going to name but they get yelled at and they don't want to attend anymore that's why you don't see as many people as you used to go into council meetings we need to be helpful we need to help people in the community not scare them away we need to be more involved the mayor needs to participate with city council well and also along those lines then do you think I, th I believe the city charter allows the mayor to attend the council meetings but do you think it should be mandatory for the mayor to attend council meetings? I don't think it should be mandatory. The mayor should do it on his, on his own time. He should be a volunteer doing this. And if he doesn't, the people of Scranton should vote that mayor out. Simple as that. We have the power to get rid of that mayor. If we don't like him not attending the council meetings, he's going to know about it. And in fact, I voted against Chris Darty when he ran last election. And I'm proud of that. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what? Uh, Getting back to the financial challenges of the city, because, and I know that's, you're tying that in with the tax issue as well, which is justifiable. What is your plan to address this ongoing financial challenge? Well, I'm going to sound like a broken record here, okay. but you're going to know the answer. Like I said before, if we lower taxes, our tax rates go down, obviously, and the revenue for the city is going to go up because more people and more businesses want to live here. People want to invest here. People want to People will be able to afford to live in the Scranton community because there's going to be decent jobs here because there's going to be more businesses and so they can start fixing up their homes. The property taxes are going to be lower so they can be able to afford to live in a home 
And that's how you fix the financial problem. And the city's going to get more money if we expand our tax base. We need more people in Scranton, more businesses, not less. We, I don't want to scare anybody away. And my opponent, Gary Lewis, he's the bankruptcy guy. Oh, let's Scranton declare bankruptcy. Let's see what happens. Let's roll the dice. Well, we're going to be giving our freedom away to some, some court out there saying, OK, we're going to decide what your tax rates are. And then the creditors are going to come in, and they're going to gobble up all, all the city's assets, all the taxpayers' assets. And then Gary Lewis, who owns a, 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 a debt uh, uh, whatever firm, I, I don't even know what it is, it's a made up job, I believe, but he's, go, he's gonna benefit from the city declaring bankruptcy. His business is gonna benefit from this. And when the taxpayers are gonna get like a, who knows, 100% increase next year in their taxes, he, and he's the mayor, when he, when he gets done in his four years, he's gonna skip town and say, ha ha, look at it, I built my business around Scranton's demise. I don't think we need that. <clears throat> I'm against bankruptcy, I'm against commuter taxes, I'm against further taxation on our citizens in Northeast Pennsylvania, and in Scranton especially. We've had enough. <clears throat> well, in that ca aside from the bankruptcy issue, which he has, your opponent, uh, Mr. Lewis, has proposed, I believe, why should the residents of Scranton vote, let's say, for you and not for him? Well, for one thing... Your, he's your only opponent, I believe. Yeah, I wish he was here. Yeah, but well, uh, so do I. On, honestly, he's the bankruptcy guy. If we declare bankruptcy, who's going to want to come here and live? Who's going to want to start a business in a bankrupt city? Is someone from like Ohio or Virginia going to go, oh, gee, Scranton just declared bankruptcy. Better hitch up the wagon and go ahead there and start a, start a, start a home, start a business. Nobody's going to do that. It's going to scare more people away. It's going to hurt us in the long run. It's going to ruin our image. Already there's a TV show called The Office out there that makes fun of us on national TV. And I'm sure it's aired in other countries too. So the whole world knows that Scranton's a screwed up place. So we can't have any more of that. But people should vote for me because I'm trying to genuinely help them. I'm trying to make a future in Scranton. I'm trying to invest here. But because of the taxes, because of all this corruption and the good old boys network being run downtown in City Hall with Chris Doherty, I'm being pushed out of my own hometown. Like I said, most of my friends left the city. And I'm not that old. Most of my family left the city. People don't come back. They leave. And they're happy that they left. They're better off. So I need to change that. I need to lower taxes as your mayor. <coughs> Well, that brings me to leadership. And the most exception, exceptional form of leadership, as we know, is leadership by example. So what example or examples would you set, and how will your cabinet uh, follow suit to do the same? I have many, in the, many people in the community that I've spoken with. They want to actually volunteer their services to the city in any capacity that we can manage. So there's free labor out there, and there's a lot of retired people. They bring a lot of knowledge to the table, and they want to help the city because they want to live here. They want to stay here. And so I'm going to work with them. And also, I'm not going to take a pay raise. Whatever the mayor's making now, that's what I'm going to make. I'm not going to take the extra 10 grand a year. I'm not going to take the extra 15 after that, or whatever council and all these other, uh, all these other people are suggesting. Honestly, uh, is the common citizen of Scranton getting a pay raise? No. Why should the mayor? Why should anybody else in the city get a pay raise if the taxpayer is not getting a pay raise? That's leadership by example. Mm -hmm. Not only that, the parking meters downtown, I'm against that. It keeps shoppers out of the downtown. It pushes them to go up to Dixon City Music and Taylor to go shop. I do it myself. I don't want to pay for the damn meters. In fact, I park at the Steamtown Mall when I can because it's free. Mm -hmm. And like I said, with the taxes going up every year, and now you want to tax people with parking meters, it's like, who wants to pay more money to be in a place that they don't want to be? And the downtown's empty. Right now, we should get rid of parking meters. And if I have to, I'll saw down the parking meters myself personally. If you want to help me, gladly. You, you can meet me downtown if I'm the mayor. We'll saw them down together. Only at night. Only at night. <laughs> no, no, when I'm the mayor, it'll be during the day. People, people are going to see us. We're going to make the news. But uh, that's leadership by example. No, no, no uh, increase in pay for the mayor. Uh, I'll, I'll cut down the parking meters myself. And like I said, I'm, I'm a Republican. I'm a young Republican. I know I'm up against the wall here. You know, uh, the forces are against me in Scranton politics. But uh, I'm going to do what I have to do to help my city, help my hometown, help my family, help my neighborhood. Well, you know, a little while ago we talked about the, the, the synergistic uh, working of council. There's that word again. I know. I, <laughs> I wanted to use it a second time just to make sure you heard me. But the council, as we know, is, uh, I, I'm not sure how to ask this. But I, I think they're responsible for the debacle of the Scranton Parking Authority, for the default. Now, with that said, what's your position on the Scranton Parking Authority? I mean, we know about the meters, but on the Scranton Parking Authority and the, and the takeover by a receivership. 
Well, honestly, I, I think the, the parking authority should have been in charge, uh, the mayor should have been in charge of that from day one. Mm -hmm. Right now, it was in charge of, I forget the man's name, I have no idea. There's so many people under corruption charges right now and who are screwing up the city. But the parking authority, from my understanding, is not under council's leadership or under the city's. However, when they need money or they need a bailout, all of a sudden, okay, it's the city's problem now, it's the taxpayer's problem. So the city needs to take control of the parking authority again. We can't let it be independently managed because honestly, they just don't give a damn about the Scranton taxpayer. They're running, they're running, the, biz, they're running the parking authority into the ground. And so the city needs to take control of that again. And I would prefer the mayor's office to take control rather than council because you can have a, a more direct approach when you know, bad things happen. Well, I think I agree with that. However, uh, it's my understanding that this is a federal, once you default on a loan and go into bankruptcy, it's a, it's, it comes under federal jurisdiction, not city, municipal, or state jurisdiction. Yeah. So the question then is, what would be your plan to take back control of the parking authority? We'd have to review the parking authority top to bottom. In fact, that's some of my plan to uh, cut some of the, the debt, the waste, and the corruption uh, you know, uh, out of the city. I want to review every department you know, whether it's uh, fire, police, DPW, administration, the parking authority. And uh, I, wa I want to be a hands-on manager. I want to see what we can cut, what, how much money we can save. And uh, if I could, I'd like to pay off the parking authority's debt a little bit at a time. I'd like to work with the federal government, work with the courts, see if we can try to, you know, broker a break for the Scranton taxpayer because they're literally being bled to death. And I want to abolish the parking authority, practically. I want to gut it because, like I said, I want to get rid of these damn parking meters. Mm -hmm. when, it, uh, when it comes to the mayor's office, and let's say, let's assume for now, you uh, win the primary and are elected in November, what would be your first priority as mayor? Lower the taxes. And how would you do that? Like I said, I want to review every city department, mm -hmm. and like I said, I want to be a hands-on manager. I want to see where we can save money at. Mm -hmm. And as we're lower in taxes, we're starting to attract more businesses, more people to the city. So over time, you know, maybe a year, a couple years, over time, rather than long, long, long down the road, decades ahead, we're going to start lowering our tax rates and we're going to start raising more revenue for the city because we're going to be expanding our tax base. More people and more businesses are going to want to be in the city. So therefore, you have more people paying into the tax system. You have more revenue going to the city. That's how you fix the finances, not raising taxes, lowering them. That's going to be my first priority as mayor. Well, we know the taxes for any uh, form of government are the revenue side of, of the ledger and expenses are the liability side, what would you do to control or reduce expenses? I would re review every city department. I Honestly, I can't tell you specifics right now because I'm not the mayor not the, mm -hmm. the mayor yet. I haven't been in those departments. I can't tell you what needs to be cut and this and that. I'm not in there yet. Mm -hmm. But I'm going to review the departments. I'm going to make the cuts. Okay. And I don't believe that the city should borrow money at all, ever, ever again, because that's what got us in this problem in the first place. The city should live within its operating budget every year. The city should never borrow money because, say it runs, runs short one year, we start borrowing money. What happens when you're short the next year? You've got to pay the interest plus the loan, and so now you're borrowing more money, and it turns into a vicious cycle until you turn into where we are now, Scranton, Pennsylvania. And so I don't believe city government should borrow money at all. It's not, it's, it's not, it shouldn't be their authority. I believe pri private sectors should borrow money, not government, especially local government. They should live within their means, live within the operating budget. <clears throat> so basically your platform is fiscal policy and responsibility. Is yeah. A true statement? Yeah. I think so too from listening. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it sounded that way. Uh, Marcel Lisi, a candidate for the Republican uh, Party for the uh, primary election, which is Tuesday. May 21st. Uh, with that said, I'd like you to do a closing statement. Okay. Uh, you know, you can, uh, I'm not a bad guy, so even if you go two and a half minutes, that's okay. Oh, okay, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to lower your taxes as mayor, and I'm going to bring more businesses back to the city. In fact, Beretta Firearms is thinking about leaving the state of Maryland right now because the taxes are, are, are too high. Honestly, I would love to speak with the representatives of Beretta Firearms and tell them, come to Scranton, Pennsylvania greatest city on earth. We can build your product. We have an overeducated workforce. We can meet your demand. We're the hub of the northeast. We got New York City to the east, Boston to the north, uh, pick Pittsburgh to the west. We got Baltimore, DC, Philadelphia to the south. This can be a manufacturing hub. This is where the job should be at. 
And so as mayor, I'm going to work hard to do that. I'm going to work hard to put big families back in big homes again. I want to lower taxes. I want a bigger community here, not a smaller community. We should attract people to the city, not scare them away. Okay, Marcel Lisi, uh, Republican candidate for mayor uh, for the primary election Tuesday, May 21st. We want, on behalf of ECTV, our viewers and our audience, we want to thank you for coming. Oh, well, thank, thank you for you. sharing your views with us and, and uh, addressing all the issues that are facing, the important issues facing the city of Scranton I hope today. we can do this again soon. Well, we, we might be doing it one awesome. more time. Okay? All thank right. you, well, thank, thank you for coming. Thank you. I appreciate it. Good night, everybody.